Hello. Hi. <laughs> I hope this is fine. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm are, you, are you rushing? Uh, I was a rushing a little bit, but uh, okay. I was thinking that I'm pushing everyone to do this, but actually uh, I really don't like to do this myself and <laughs> especially not answering the questions. But, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just thankful that it, uh, you're the one answering the questions uh -huh. um, and not me, Ex so, except, the, except that I had to do a little work uh, this morning that what? came up with some questions for you. Oh. So, I, so no. I've been looking at some videos of you. I've been reading some bios and stuff. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, are you in Paris now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. At home. And how do you feel? Better or? Yeah, no, I'm good. Uh, uh, yeah, I feel good. I I'm, I had the symptoms um, what a month ago more. Yeah. Six. Uh, no, two month two months ago, like early early on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, really bad. I was in bed for a couple weeks, and um, and that, no, I feel I feel great now, and I even took the. I took the test to see if I have the antibodies, and the test was negative. So, it's crazy. I saw yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it again. I mean, who knows? Who knows what that means? Yeah. I, yeah. I, otherwise, I had the worst flu I've ever had in my life. So. Oh no! But does it come? So, but they say it's coming back. Sometimes does it come back or? It's no, I have, I have, no. I've had 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 zero symptoms since. Okay, um, and not your family. They, yeah, they all had kind of minor symptoms. Okay. My son had a little bit like me, but only for a, a short period, mm -hmm. um, like four or five days of, of uh, you know, the bad cough and everything. Mm -hmm. And then he was fine. But the, uh, my wife and my daughter had kind of light symptoms and everything. Oh, who knows? Who knows? I mean, the, the whole thing is a mystery. Yeah, and you know they just all the, these tests for the antibodies. Some seem to be reliable, others not. They say mm -hmm. the one here in France is reliable, but um, mm -hmm. I know of someone else who who had tested positive for the virus. Yeah, and they had it, and then um, uh, then tested then didn't test for the anti antibodies afterwards. Mm -hmm. so, okay, crazy. Uh, difficult to know what to think or to yeah. know. To, yeah. All I know is I'm staying was staying home, wearing the mask. Um, yeah, yeah. Doing doing that, and you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> but in some weird way, I mean, I hate to say this because I know a lot of people are suffering, and um, you know, both both physically and with family and and economically. But in in some ways, this this time uh, has been a. Uh, I, I can I don't know I can't describe it. I, I needed it somehow to like have a have a break with yeah going too fast and and mm -hmm. be being forced to like slow down yeah and um, pay attention to some things right around me and and um, and th to think about the future too. I don't know um, I don't know about you, but for me it's been a a really in, important productive time of self-reflection and mm -hmm. um yeah do you feel like you had, yeah you're, inter you're interviewing me now what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead what's the question <laughs> I, well, what, what did i want to ask uh do you feel like otherwise you don't stand still so often or in the same way or in the same way or yeah, I mean, you just, you get busy and do you feel pressure to, you know, um, earn a living and, and produce work and stay productive and, and have time for friends and family and, you know, do all the things you want to do, but you, you realize you, you start you're moving faster and faster and, yeah. and, and time slips away and um, you fill your time up with things that are, you kind of I, I don't know for me I discovered are are not were not so important to me mm -hmm. that, why was I spending time yeah. doing that kind of thing yeah. um, and also really to step back from from my work and have a chance to 
there's been things that have, I've been waiting to edit for a long time that I keep pushing back because every day something else comes up that I need to deal with. And so having time to edit a little bit, um, uh, I still didn't get to all the things that I, I really wanted to accomplish during, during yeah. this time, but yeah. um, I don't know. Can I ask you? Oh yeah, go ahead. I, I just, <laughs> just like last okay. question while, while I'm asking the question. Like uh, if you're re like so really, really sick, as you said in the emails that you were like really, really sick, uh, what do you think about? When I was sick? Yes. Like when you were there, like very, very, like do you even, yeah, what, what are you thinking about? You know, the, I, was, I was in bed for 17 days, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I felt so awful the entire time that I don't even, I kind of don't even remember it. It seems oh. like one big blur where it's being half asleep that you, you I don't know if I really, I don't know. I remember like I changed a painting on my wall because I sat and stared at it for hours and thought, I don't like that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. um, uh, no, but I was, I mean, I was so sick that you did, you didn't have, I didn't feel like I had the, it wasn't like, oh, I feel a little bit tired, so I'm staying in bed. I mean, I was really sick, splitting headache. Yeah. Um, and I even tried a couple times to, to to watch a movie or something like that, and I I couldn't get through it. I was just, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I was, I've, I've never been that sick. I was, it was awful. Yeah. So I didn't really, I didn't think about much. It's been since, and, and actually, once I got out of bed, and then like the next ten days, I was still. Um, uh i just kind of out of it it took a while to get my strength back and and mm -hmm. that's when i kind of started yeah. thinking more about you know um yeah the, the next apocalypse yeah <laughs> <laughs> will life ever get back i don't know all, all these things will life what we're all thinking about you know yeah when when will things get back to normal how will it what does normal look like mm -hmm. um is there some sort of silver lining that that um, once this is over, do we as a, as a society, as, as a human race, um, uh, is there some change for better that comes out of it? You yeah. know, less consumption, less unnecessary travel, um, environmental things, like do we, do we now start to look at in a real way, like uh, um, the, the the coming the coming uh, environmental disaster you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this is kind of a a warm up for that maybe yeah um, yeah I hope and, and that's that's the thing that I kind of like I'm, that's part of, big part of my anxiety all the time and that's helped bring in this nice sharp focus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what about you how's uh, give me an update you're you're in Belgium. Uh, I'm in Belgium. Uh, in the beginning, I was um, really, if, I mean, like, I really had difficulties to find a balance, to find, like, to know how I would, I had to cover this. I felt like I needed to do something useful in a way. And then after a while, I, or like, then I was thinking photography, yeah, well, it's not useful. I should, like, help out and, you know, like, maybe in a hospital or whatever. But then I, I kind of, find back a little bit my balance and kind of agreed with myself to that it's fine to try to cover this in my own way um i mean i, I yeah i don't know i was also very aware and i'm still very aware of all those people who like this stay home hashtag and we are all in this together thing uh that must i mean it's not for everyone like a good thing like this stay home it's terrible for so many people and I really yeah. this is really something I, I kind of struggle with how to deal with but uh, I mean this is not only now you know um, <laughs> it's always that uh, everyone is in a different kind of um, uh, yeah different environment different context so but yeah I find it difficult and now I mean in this time it's like I'm I mean I'm super kind of with myself I'm happy and healthy and everything is going well but still I'm yeah aware of what's around as well which is yeah what's, 
What's happening in Belgium? Is it is it locked still under confinement uh, or? It's it's better since like every week it's going a little bit more loose in a way. So now yeah. the shops open. We have to have distance, uh, take distance from each other, and then we can each see four people. Uh, and this is a very confusing rule because everyone is interpreting it in their own way. <laughs> but um, I mean, it's opening up, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah, but it's here this this weekend went out. I mean, this past week it just, it opened up here. There's still restaurants are not open, like that, but yeah. shops are open. You wear the mask, but the number of people out in the like in the parks, in the in the along the river, and as if none of this has ever happened. Oh, yeah. And it was it was a little bit uh, terrifying. I mean, yeah. I, I kind of fear another wave because I can't imagine in two or three weeks if there's not another uh, yeah. Yeah. outbreak again because it was just, I mean, people really like, oh, that, that whole thing never happened. Mm -hmm. But anyways. All right. Okay. <laughs> this is already too, it's already almost 20 minutes. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So we'll go fast then. Um, I, I looked, I watched it, you know, some of the others and they went off. Um, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start in a way that uh, I, people always, you know, is it one of those annoying things uh, in interviews when they start off with a, a quote from your biography, uh -oh. um, from your bio. Uh, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Um, uh, <laughs> It gets me into a question. The relationship, uh, this is a quote from your, from your bio yeah. that I got from your website. The relationships DePorter establishes with the subjects of her photographs lie at the foundation of her artistic practice. Accidental encounter, encounters are the starting point and how these interactions naturally develop dictates the suite. Um, so, I, you know, I think if I apply, oh, the connection is bad. Oh, sorry. knocking on someone's door. I don't know. Ex or am I breaking up? Yeah, now it's fine again. Maybe if you repeat the question, it will be okay. I think. Okay, I was saying that um, if I apply that um, that quote to your earlier work of, I'm not exactly sure how you you did it but I assume there was something some sort of you meet someone and you say hey can I come over to your house and spend the night yeah and am I breaking up again yes it's my um, let me check if I'm on the, I'm, I'm on the wrong con I'm on the wrong internet uh, I'll go and switch it's my fault um, so this should work are you still there are you still there Yes, I think now I it's, I, I'm on a better internet connection now. I think. Okay. So this quote is about these accidental encounters being the starting point of something, and um, these these how the how these uh, encounters naturally develop dictates what happens or what yeah. pictures come out of it. I guess, and that's easy to apply that for to your earlier work where it's you know the, the encounter is I meet someone I go over to the house and that night I spend the night with them and I photograph them but your newer your more recent work changes that equation a little bit and um, so I'm curious about you know is there a criteria that you are looking for in these in these accidental encounters that that make you want to naturally develop this this encounter into a photo uh, into a yeah. subject or whatever um, is it this per this person's particular story that you feel compelled to document or is it about the compulsion to know them to understand them um, I don't know just a, it's yeah. not a very precise question but yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious about that process yeah um, or to hear you uh, about that I think it's I mean, I, I guess the question is also about how to find subjects or uh, how to how to find the, or like how w when do you connect to the or when do you find someone to photograph? I mean, and for me, it's it's like I like lately I really 
like in my earlier work, I was really work, uh, walking on the streets and like finding people I was interested in. And then I would ask the question if I sp would spend, uh, if I could spend the night with them. But then now, like the people now I'm working around Agatha and Michael and like other things and how I meet those people. It's like, I think it's more by living life in a way. And I kind of like, I, I feel like my, I'm not really, I, I really try not to search for projects anymore and try to like gradually, but like they come in my life and they become my life in a way and um like for agatha i was i mean i i mean yeah I, I met her in paris and i was there for the life lab so in a way i was kind of looking for something to photograph but i felt really not okay i felt bad i, I kind of gave up on photography and i actually wanted to go home in a way and then i end up in the thread bar because the bouncer let me in and i always like to say yes to everything like to most things people uh, proposed to me and then I was sitting there and then there was Agatha dancing there and then I, I felt super connected to her but there's something and I mean and she felt the same way about me I think and there's something about like now two years later we reflect on why we were so interested in each other and maybe it has more to do about I mean, we talked about this, and maybe it has more to do about how M, how I was during this moment and how she was during this moment in a way. And I felt like maybe I needed her and maybe she needed me. And this is also the project that came out of it. Like we, we kind of used each other to explore ourselves. And I feel like more and more the people I photograph um, or the people I work with, it's often not only photography anymore, it's more trying to like look at myself in a way by using the other or like by looking at someone else to take a look closer to yourself. And I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, this is, I, I can, I, I see that in the, in the photographs actually. Yeah. That's, that's what made me want to ask that question okay. because, because yeah. even specifically Agatha that I look at the pictures and I see, I, I, I don't see a document of a, of, of a girl or yeah, I see something about that thing that's happened. Um, yeah. An experience that is happening between the two of you and, and a moment in your life and, um, and a, a friendship or a, yeah. Yeah. a curiosity that, that is more than about a documentation. Yeah. And I think especially with Agatha, it's like obvious that in the beginning, you know, this relationship between like me and her is changing all the time. And over time, my photos are, also really changing. Uh, like in the beginning, I, I, did, I actually thought it would be like a short encounter as I normally photograph people. And then it became like, um, that we became friends and I became more curious and like it became this like, not fight, but like this tension between us on how she wanted to be photographed and I how I wanted to photograph her. And I mean, it became an exploration of both of us. And also the, photo the photos totally changed, like the visual language in a way. Uh, and I, I mean, I try, I, I really try to be open to that and like to, in the beginning of a project to not define myself or like not think about the end result and like let myself lead in a way and not think too much about what I want to do. Uh, which is, I mean, I don't know how you feel about this, but like the more you, the more you know, or the more you are a professional photographer, right? The more, is it for you more difficult to, um to like because i i i read about you like that you're I, i'm sorry i'm i'm again asking you a question <laughs> not fair but but it, it, it has to do with your question okay. but like i i read also that you're like like love to um let your subconscious lead your projects right this is do you i mean yeah. I, the, the, the question is how how I mean, I'm really now with my projects now, I'm really trying to listen to my subconscious and like to like, like not like let, let myself in a way decide what I want to do, but not really like have a concept in mind before I start and just let my interest lead my projects. Uh, with this probably also my subconscious, but I'm wondering how like, and I, I often find difficulties sometimes because I'm thinking too much on 
a result because I kind of know what I'm doing as well. So how do you like, how, how do you be, how are you free? Like, do you like, how do you keep this freedom in your mind while you take pictures? This is like, for me, something I really try to find out. That's ex exactly the same for me. I mean, it's always the, that sense of freedom in, in, in observing and in exploring a subject. And the, the moment I feel like I'm like, okay, now I have to do this and this and this in the project. That's when it feels, that's when it falls apart for me because it yeah. loses that, that spontaneity and that curiosity and yes. that organic thing. Yeah. yeah. But then how do you, like, do you then stop for a moment and take a break to then again, like, start over or is it something that is that you accept uh, i think it's a bit of both and and it's it's like everything in life it's situational you know there are it, I, I always said like for instance with my book sun the moment that i realized that these were actual pictures that i make was making that's when it, that's when i stopped and that's when i said okay we got to do i've got to do a book yeah. with this because when i tried to continue it 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 felt forced and it didn't feel organic anymore. The pictures I felt showed that. Now I've continued photographing my family and I think I've sort of, it's taken years to sort of find the workaround and let myself be free within that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's, sometimes it's about taking a break. Sometimes it's about, yeah. flip, I don't know, flipping the, the, the situation somehow. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, question number two also comes from um uh, comes from um a quote from your bio <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> but the re but the re <laughs> but the reason why is because it it's it has to do it's a the question i'm going to ask you is about very much a question that i ask myself and i think a lot of photographers do several recent this is a quote several recent projects have been the result of deporter do i say your name right by the way deporter deporter okay <laughs> Several recent projects have been the result of Deporter always questioning the medium itself. Uh, questioning the medium itself is a is a theme that comes up with a lot of photographers. You know, I I can I probably all I could you know most photographers who talk to at Magnum would probably sure. yes, talk yes. about this. Yeah. I know I know I have for sure and and a moment in my life I mean I still am always questioning the medium but there was a moment when it was a a real crisis especially because I I come from a very photojournalistic yeah. background and and broke away from that and it was in a moment when I my my questioning of the medium had to do with this idea of uh what gives me the right to be able to say something about someone else's existence or experience you know who, who do I think I am to, to do that mm -hmm. um, and that's when my work really turned into towards my my family and towards, towards more personal work and, and broke from this idea of, of, uh, of documentation or journalism in that sense um, of course this question now continues with me and about you know the ethics of what I was doing and <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, the ethics of, of, of photographing someone and, and all, all of these things. So um, I would ask you, what is your question that you talk about in that quote? Um, uh, do you mean you question why you do it? Do you question your methods of how you do it? The, the ethics of what you, you, you what, what was that question for you? Yes, yeah. I guess, well, it's not one question, so uh, I don't think I can cover it. It's really difficult to like summarize, I think, but I think I'm super, I think it again has to do with the relationship with the uh, people I work with. Uh, and this, I mean, this is probably also like why, why this relationship is defining my work is because I'm often questioning the use of the other and um, more than the medium it's well, well yeah and i think in the, the latest projects um all of the projects come out of like a frustration and like this i mean i think yeah, many of photographers has this like this hate love relationship with photography and then uh, I, I i really think i wanna i i, I don't want to do it anymore because i kind of 
struggle with it and then suddenly I find an entrance to deal with it in a way uh, and then I use the medium of photography to deal with it I think so but for example I mean the first time I mean it actually started all like the first time I really felt comfortable with photography was met my first book in Russia when I entered people's homes and asked people to spend the night uh, for me it was just because I couldn't I didn't have money and then uh, it was the first time I felt comfortable with photography because people let me into their homes and they trusted me and there was this relationship. So for me, this was the first time I find kind of um, a solution for the uncomfortable feeling of taking pictures in the street. But then in Egypt, for example, I really questioned, like I really felt an outsider and I felt like I was portraying them, the people in Egypt, um, um, from a, I mean, from a Western point of view, in a way, and I couldn't stand the idea that many people would see my photos and um, also interpret them from a Western point of view. And this is why uh, I didn't want to make the book because I had a publisher. But this is why I mean, I didn't want to make the book uh, with only the pictures because I it didn't show the complexity of the country in a way. And that's why the solution then, like for six months, I was in like a big, uh, like, I didn't know what to do really. And then I thought maybe I should go back to Egypt to ask other Egyptians to write their thoughts on the images. And this way, uh, I think if people now see my images with just like with the Arabic, uh, without understanding the Arabic, and then if they see the translation, there's a shift in interpretation of the same photo because what people write on them. And also I wanted to include people who didn't want to let them be photographed in a way. But then I think it's, it's changing all the time. Like for, for example, you went on the same residency in set in the south of France. So. I wanted to have a whole nother session to talk to you about that. <laughs> oh my God, so yes. <laughs> but for example, there it was like, you were, before, you were there before me and other great photographers and um, there, I also had a big conflict and there it, I think my work changed as well because I normally I don't do so many assignments in a way and because I kind of want to feel free but there I wanted to do it because it was for this book and exhibition and I, it, I felt it was an honor to make work there and I was walking around in the streets and I really saw the people that I on the streets as possible subjects for my work and I felt like I didn't look at them as human beings in a way, like just like possible people who could I who I could use. And this was such a conflict on how I want to see photography. And like, because if you, if you don't think about, like in the past, I was just like being a photographer because I was interested in people, you know, and like, I wanted to know their stories and suddenly, and I wanted to share with them. And suddenly I was looking at them as like objects almost. Um, sorry? like props yeah and I mean yes 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 yes. and I felt like I didn't take pictures the first two weeks and also the idea that I had to deliver you know and that uh, uh, it makes me like really uncomfortable and then I was doing this uh, like always like really interested in the night and was walking around that night and then suddenly I thought like okay I, really maybe I don't have to try to tell the truth maybe it's fine that I see them like this and if I accept this and if I also like tell this to the people that I'm kind of making my own story with them and they kind of function in an actor in my own narrative or something like this, uh, I felt relieved in a way. And I think each time I find a solution to deal with my struggle. Uh, but the struggle is different all the time. With Agatha, like there, we had so many struggles. I mean, but Agatha, in the end, I was really questioning also if if our relationship, if I would stop taking pictures of her, if our relationship, if we would still be friends in a way. And I like to kind of, with my work, try not to answer those questions, but try to address those with the people I work with in a way. So it's yeah. I'm I'm sorry. Long answer. <laughs> Okay, uh, one, I got one, one more question. Yeah. Well, it won't come from a bio. <laughs> uh, 
it's about the the idea of for, for me but there's a there's a part of photography that's a compulsion especially the pictures that i'm making every day and of my family kind of thing and it's it's like this this the act of photography is is a compulsive act and the the the, the itch that uh, that it scratches it has to do with the act itself and the fact that a photograph comes out of it is almost beside the point Mm -hmm. um, it's it, and it's sort of this excuse to observe and to see uh, to observe something and or experience something or grab hold of something um, with no forethought of life. What what does this um, what does this become? Mm -hmm. uh, or even really care about so and that's why sometimes I spend uh, I have I I'm, I have you know, files and files of folders that I, uh, folders of pictures that I haven't looked through because, you know, I it was, it was the taking the picture that, that I cared about, yeah. um, uh, the, the making of it and not the, not the then looking at, it. um, so that's my compulsion. Um, and I'm wondering what is, and you've kind of touched on this already a little bit, but what, if, if you could think of it in that sense, sort of a way, what is, what, what is your compulsion with with photography? Um, is it the resulting photograph? Is it the, the 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 story itself? Is it the book? Is it the exhibition? Do you do you feel comp compelled to tell a story or or to to see? Yeah, good question. <laughs> I think I think it's shifting as well, uh, and I mean I guess. Like, I think it's, it's, yeah, I think it's changing because in the past I was more thinking about projects and about not necessarily, I mean, I think my, I think my photography became more and more selfish and um, it's more about dealing with myself maybe. Uh, uh, sometimes I feel really guilty about this as well. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, and I take less and less pictures, I feel like, and I do, I try more and more, maybe I like try to use other mediums as well. Like I made a film and because I felt like it was a better medium to deal with what I wanted to share or what I wanted to deal with during that moment. Um, now, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know anymore, really. It's confusing. I'm confused about this. Like, because sometimes, sometimes if I take a picture and I think it was like really reflected what I felt that moment, I really want to see the photo. And then often I photograph and really I don't like, I don't care so much about what they are, but they kind of feed my thoughts in a way. And then I put them on the wall, not because I like the photos, because, but because they kind of um, help me to understand or help me to look at the world in a way. And maybe those pictures are not very interesting for the audience. Um, so I'm not sure if they ever end up in a book or exhibition or whatever. Um, uh, so yeah, I don't know. And this is a very confusing answer probably <laughs> to your question. Uh, but I wanna feel, yeah, I don't know. But I, in the end, if I, if I think about sharing with the audience and if I'm, if I think it, it might be fine to share, then probably a book is the most ideal uh, way for me to do for now. Because I have this one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, maybe it's a cliche, but I have this like very personal relationship to photography and I feel like in a book, maybe it, it, it's maybe the most intimate way to share this like personal interaction or something like this but um you do very powerful books so <laughs> thank you yeah. you too like it's it's crazy how how yeah yeah intimate they are within your family do you, <laughs> do you have time for more questions or <laughs> yeah um, my bonus no round here. I've got my bonus round questions. Sorry? I've got my bonus round questions for you. Oh, but I think, well, uh oh. <laughs>
Oh, you were. Uh, maybe we ahead. should come for the concept, like the. But maybe, maybe you uh, like. Um, can I ask you one more, and then maybe we should. Okay. Of course. Uh, what What do you want? I mean, I want to ask many, but. Um, um, like. Is your family taking pictures of you as well? Uh, yes. I mean, this is not the only question I want to ask, but this is one that comes to my mind now. But like, <coughs> they see, I mean, this is one question. And then maybe because they see you constantly, you take photos of them. Does yeah. this also change your relationship with them? Or like, do they pose for you still? Or I mean, how, how, this is something I always wonder if I see your work. Do. Oh. Uh, you are. Hello, hello. You are cutting off. It, it froze, so I'm, I lost the last bit of your question. You're still frozen like this. Oh, maybe that means we have to quit. <laughs> but I want to, do you hear me? Hopefully it'll come back. Do you hear me? Uh, hello, hello. Hello. Okay, wait. I'll stop. Yes. Yes. I'm okay. Back. Okay. Okay. It froze, so I lost a lot of the question there. But one, the one part I heard does does it change my relationship with my family? Mm -hmm. Do they do they make pictures of me? My my wife, yes, makes pictures. Not not in the, they don't do it in the same way that I do because it's not it's not their compulsion like it is mine. But yeah. You know, they, Everybody's a photographer. They have their phones. They make pictures. My my son and daughter both are very interested in photography and and have, you know love it. The, sometimes they stop me and like, can I take a picture of that? Mm -hmm. And so I'll give them my camera or my phone, and they'll make they'll make a picture and they'll kind of work the scene a little bit. It's, it's interesting to watch. Um, and sometimes they want to photograph me. Mm -hmm. And my wife does it also just in the course of our everyday life. So. Um, We've I've actually we sort of jokingly, but maybe it will happen one day a, a, a collaborative book between. Mm -hmm. us, which, yeah. Which would be cool. But yeah, there's the I'm right now I'm working on editing the another book about my family and this one about my daughter, um, who and a part of the book, part of the theme of the book or what the pictures are about is this exploration of this relationship that is affected by the fact that I'm photographing her mm -hmm. um, yeah. and she this this sort of thing of where she she's performs and sometimes I don't know if her performance is to kind of make fun of me because she knows like oh this is what I'm supposed to do when you take my picture you know and she knows like you know that that you know that yeah a yeah. lot of look of you're taking my picture and that's the way I'm supposed to look or if she's making fun of me to do it or if she's actually trying to help me or you know the, all these things oh. so, this really I think I wanted part of the to be about the idea of this experience between the two of us I saw you lost what I yes yes but now I hear you again now I hear you again yeah. um, Okay, so this so part of what I wanted to, to show to come through in the book is this um, this sort of uh, uh, relations, the, the play, the game of this relationship of her awareness and and my feeling, my presence in the pictures, um, and that thing that changes between between the two of us. So yeah, it's, it is very interesting. Okay. Uh, Okay, yeah, this is what I, yeah, this is what I was wondering all the time if I see your photos. It's nice to make a book about this. Yeah, and, and um, in fact, she, she was the one who kind of then said, you know, because she knows the, the book about her brother. Yeah. She was like, where's my book? You know, oh, really? <laughs> Good. So, yeah, you have to do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think internet is leaving us as well. <laughs> the yeah, yeah. We should, uh, um, um, but, um, yeah, thanks for, yep, <laughs> next time it's you, <laughs> you will answer. <laughs> um, uh, thanks for doing this, be part yeah. of the uh, conversation. And good, to, good to talk to you. Same, same. Hopefully we see each other soon. Soon, soon yeah. Life. Yeah, okay. Have a good rest of the day. Bye-bye, see you. Hello, hello. Thanks, Chris, for doing the conversation with me this morning.
Um, so this, uh, with this last conversation, we finished the first round, but we are not quitting. We continue with two hats. So this hat has the people inside who were answering before, and this one is having the people who were asking the questions. Now we will switch and those will ask the questions and the other ones will answer. So this will be the photographer who is asking the questions. Moises. And this photographer will answer. Alex Hood. Good combination. So the concept stays the same. Three questions. Thank you very much. See you. Bye bye.